Are you hungry for a little art? Well, you're in luck. Guess I've got an art snacks box here. Let's open it up, see what's inside, and draw something with the contents. Ooh, that sounded clever, didn't it? Oh, wow. There's something big in here. <laughs> oh my gosh, is there one of those in here? I just broke that one. There is a thin piece of... It feels like toned paper card stock. Oh my gosh, it's a little baby! The absolute teeny tiniest kneaded eraser I've ever seen in my life. I thought it was a candy. So cute. We have the Art Snacks sticker with little hearts on it this month. I believe this is the February box, so maybe that's Valentine's theme. Here's the menu with the list of supplies. Oh, and the candy. Got some Smarties. <laughs> Shrivels up. <laughs> I think these are pastels. Yeah. I like the color scheme. Rich oranges. Five soft pastel half sticks. They're using a famous artist's name. Maybe that means they're good. <laughs> and look at that. The pen I broke from the last scroller box. This is identical. I wasn't a huge fan of it, if you remember, because it wasn't super opaque, but maybe it'll work better with these art supplies. We'll find out. Also in the box is this mechanical pencil with unbreakable lead. Comes with some refills. I love mechanical pencils because you don't have to sharpen it. And every time I use a sharpener, I swear, it just, the lead gets stuck on the end of it. And then when you try to sharpen some more, it's still in there and you get it out and then you sharpen the pencil again and the same thing happens. And it's just a continuous cycle. This is cute. I like the little container. That's probably really lame of me, but that's just what it is. We have our extra lead. Should I see if they're breakable? <laughs> just snap them all in half. Should we see if it's breakable? Oh. I broke it. It's gone. Lies. Lies. All right, so these are the art supplies in the February Art Snacks box. Excited. <laughs> as excited as I can be for pastels. What I need to do first is swatch out these art supplies so we can get a feel for how the art supplies work. Oh, they're in a the little foam thing. They each have a little pocket for their little bodies. <laughs> okay, not too messy yet. Not entirely sure how you're supposed to go about using these. I might look up a little bit of a tutorial here before we get too deep into the art. <laughs> that way I don't make a fool of myself. So those are the five colors. I'm about to blow the dust away and make a mess. Ready? <gasps> Was that as satisfying as I thought it would be? All right, let's see if the Pit Artist Pen works on top of these pastels. You have to be very light with the pen. If you're too heavy handed, you just push the pastels. Ooh, I like this. I could use this for a while. <laughs> That's about how I would have it if I was using it. So let's push real... Where did it even go? <laughs> Why would you put that so big on your packaging if it's that easy to disprove? Jokes aside though, I really do like using this. I like the width of the lead and I like the way it holds in my hand. I can't complain other than it said it was unbreakable. <laughs> This color scheme is just screaming for like a nice turquoise or cyan to like complement it. But I don't really have that option, do I? What I need to do here is just play around with them and get a feel for the art supply because there's only one art supply on this planet that I'm just not fond of. And that is crayons. And uh, soft pastels are kind of just, you know, schmancy crayons in my opinion. Well, that just gets everywhere, doesn't it? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I'm having a hard time blending it. My finger's too fat. Oh, I just broke it on accident. Lies. Now, since they provided this piece of toned paper to try the pastels on, I thought it would be cool to draw on this piece of cardboard. Just in a recycling mood, you know? These colors make me think of fall and pumpkin patches, but we've long since <laughs> passed that time of the year. I will do these erase. I didn't test that. Oh wow. Yeah, not bad. I kind of just want to try and do like a face portrait, but with these colors. I don't know how well that'll work, but I think it would be fun. And that's what I want to do. <laughs> I don't know why scissors keep getting involved with my art projects. <laughs> All right, let's try and draw a person. I think I'll use a reference so that it maybe turns out good. I will have the reference linked in the description <laughs> once I find one here. Ooh, I think this could be fun. 
Let me try this out. All right, so when using a reference, I like to just have it off to the side. So I'm not like staring at it, trying to copy it, but using it more as like a helpful guide when I'm having trouble. Like I'm like, oh, what does the space between the nose and the eye look like sort of thing. And I use it for like laying out the character, draw really basic shapes, try and figure out where everything is laid out on the reference's face. And then like try and figure out what makes that reference look like that person and not maybe look like yourself. But if you're using yourself as a reference, that doesn't really work. <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of shading and tone with the pencil just so I have an idea when it comes to adding the pastels, kind of like guidelines. Oh, it has an eraser. Secret. Now what I want is the hair to take up the entire rest of the space. That's the goal. I think that'll look really, really cool. Here we go. I didn't put a whole lot of detail into the hair because I kind of just want to play with that and have it a big, soft, fluffy sort of look. All right, so with these pastels with my swatches, some are lighter than the paper and some are darker than the paper. So this is a pretty good mid-tone. I guess it's cardboard actually <laughs> for this illustration to work on. So we should probably try, I'm gonna start with maybe the lightest and then work on wherever there's highlights, like the tip of the nose. Little nozzle. And apparently here, according to my reference, and right above the eyebrow. I wonder if you're supposed to blend these out with your hand or with something else. <laughs> try and blend that out a bit. Oh, we're gonna need a lot more layers. That's just fading into nothing, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta be careful not to like smudge the graphite underneath too much either. And then the neck. Collarbones and all that jazz. Oh, that's looking kind of cool. She looks kind of like golden and metallic. All right, we can go in maybe with the next lightest color and work on some of the other areas. Blend that out a lot more. All right, I'm having way more fun than I anticipated. Remember when I was talking about how I just like putting down a color and then blending it out? I just enjoy that so much. It's looking very orange, like a certain political leader, but I think once we start adding some more of the darker tones, that might change. Let me go with the next darker here. And then it goes a little darker around the outside of the nose. That helps the nose look like it's sticking out. Oh my gosh, I think that's what's happening. So the graphite is slippery and the pastels aren't gripping it, so it's hard to leave any pigment behind. I wonder if there's another way to do this. Just lightly erase it. And we can also shade underneath the chin. Oh, shoot, the graphite's. Gotta erase that graphite. There we go. Nah, so maybe it's just this piece. Doesn't want to be helpful. I mean, it could be because I'm using a piece. Oh my gosh, what happened? It just exploded. Well, I can use that pigment and blend it in here. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's continue around the mouth. I'm actually noticing that that's very bright must stick out a little bit more on her profile. An inverted mustache here. I think that's how most people look actually. Once I realized that was really helpful when shading faces. This light color is the only one that seems to want to like actually mark the page, which is good because I'm using a lot of it, but some of them don't want to draw for me. Blend that out. Actually darken up underneath the eyes and blend that out. It's actually looking kind of cool. This color's working, so I'm probably gonna end up using a lot of it. <laughs> if anyone can explain to me why some of the colors don't wanna draw, that'd be very helpful. <laughs> start, it's gonna take a while. Start just adding in this dark brown. Hmm, not loving the idea anymore. I wonder what would happen if I added water to this. Hmm, not a whole lot. <laughs> Try and erase some of this. See what results we get with that. Yeah, that's what happens when you use a new art supply. I've never actually used pastels in any capacity larger than swatch. Ew, I don't like that. <laughs> this is my first attempt at like trying to actually make something with it. <gasps> I've got Cheeto disease. <laughs> Some of these just don't work. It's really driving me nuts. Okay, it's been a couple hours. I took a break. I was getting really 
frustrated with this. This is not my favorite art supply. It could probably be considered my least favorite art supply, but that's okay. I'm gonna give it another go. I've got an actual piece of toned paper here. I'm gonna try avoiding using the mechanical pencil and we'll see if that solves some of my problems. I'm gonna just start drawing directly with one of the pastels. And I'm also going to try and stylize it a little bit more because I think that'd be fun so that I'm not drawing the exact same thing. So I'm gonna try to be real light. And I'm gonna try and uh, cartoonify the face a bit more. Maybe not that big. But I'm gonna try and take what I learned from shading this face and apply it to this and see how well I can translate that. So far, so good. <laughs> Try and keep it simple because it's kind of difficult to erase this stuff, you know? All right, it's a little lopsided. Let's see what I can do about that. All right, that's the sketch down. Now I want to go in with the lightest color and kind of just do the exact same thing we did with that guy. Lady, person, I don't know. Just sort of follow the example I made with the more realistic portrait. I don't have the reference out anymore because I'm charging my phone. <laughs> so the only reference I have is what I've already made and what I remember. <laughs> so this is kind of going to be an interesting way to uh, see what I took in from the reference now that I don't have it. I think I'll use this to color in the eye this time. Next color in line. I also should try to use the toned paper a bit more. Last time I kind of tried to cover over the whole thing. And this paper is lighter than the last one I used. So this second color actually isn't a light tone anymore. It's darker than this, I would say. So I can actually use it for shading. Fill in this nose. Oh, I forgot the body. <laughs> Talk about a foundation mishap. Am I right? I feel like this paper is definitely grabbing the pigment a lot better than the cardboard I was using before it did. This is also still the beginning stages and I feel like that was going really well in the first couple stages too. There we go. I feel like this is going pretty well. Need to blend out some of these and uh, add some more shading under here. I'm uh, still having a little trouble with that one. I feel like the colors look more vibrant on this one too. It's definitely kind of hurting my wrist to hold such a tiny little thing. I don't know if there's some trick to that or just buy larger pastels maybe. I feel like they make a holder for it. It's almost like finger painting. <laughs> the nose is getting lost in there. I think I'm gonna have to darken that up a bit. I forgot the ears. Let's do those really quick here. Yeah, we'll try to cover those up with hair. <laughs> All right, now I want to move on to the hair, I think. Let's try and not mess it up. That's where I was most self-conscious about how this turned out was the hair. So I'm gonna try and be all extra careful. <laughs> I'll start a little bit lighter this time. Fill in the darkest areas maybe. Start there. I'm gonna try to figure out these sections. I feel like that's working, but I should probably start on this side so that I don't put my hand throughout the face for too long. Oh, and I can't forget the freckles either. <laughs> Let me just do these eyes a little bit here before I do this part, because obviously it's going to be messy. Okay, looking pretty good. I wonder if I could darken up just some sections of the eyebrows. I don't look too bad. Hey, I feel like that really added some tone and contrast to that. I'm quite happy with that bit. Okay, back to the hair. <laughs> so, this the side of it, and then blend that out. Where there'd be some dips in the light, try to darken those areas. Then I can also add highlights. still something I need to work on, but this is definitely an improvement from that. <laughs> Some strands. 
here and there, like so. Make it a little more interesting. And then move it onto this side. Darken everything up. And the next layers. Not sure what to say about anything, so I'll just <laughs> try and enjoy the process, I think. Then I can go in with the lighter one, add some highlights here and there. I feel like an artist. Look at me. <laughs> now we just need to work on the freckles. Freckles were really, really difficult. So let's see here. This is just kind of pointy. How did that happen? I'll just grab the darker pastel here and just add a little bit more contrast here and there. Okay, I feel like I redeemed myself. <laughs> what do you think? One and two. It's funny, these colors feel brighter. I don't know if it's because of the paper or if it's the way that I use them. I'm not privy to that information, <laughs> but I like this one a lot better. I think not using the graphite really helped. I didn't have problems with the pastel sticking, but again, that could have been the cardboard. I'm not sure, but this is something I'm much happier with. Ooh, that was weird. It's a little interesting. <laughs> I do want to take some time to thank you for watching and um, I hope you enjoyed my drawing process. <laughs> I really enjoyed trying and using one of my least favorite mediums, maybe even the medium I hate. I don't know, hate's a strong word. I was feeling something very strong when I was working on this. Hate may or may not have been that, but <laughs> I'm much happier with this result. Um, I will be passing these art supplies on to one of you, so if you've never used pastels before or if you know how to use them and you'd like some more, check the link in the description to the giveaway, see if it's still active. Thanks for watching and thanks Art Snacks for sending me the box to try out and share with you. Oh wait, I forgot to use an art supply. Wait, 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 wait. Mm -mm -mm. Let me just add some highlights here. Oh, it stopped working. I got the pastels stuck on it again. It's really not doing a whole lot for me. I have to like keep cleaning it off. That's the best we're getting, I think. It wants to draw on my finger, but it does not want to draw on the pastels. Well, for now, I guess that's what it's like. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week, and I hope you have a delicious evening. Oh my gosh. Follow Waffles. Bye. Ugh.